We are now on board USS Coronado, LCS-4, an independence class littoral combat ship. My name is Commander Doug Maher. I am the commanding officer of the United States ship Coronado, littoral combat ship uh, number four. We are home ported in San Diego, California, and right now we are embarked on uh, the ship's uh, maiden overseas deployment where we have an intermediate staging base here in Singapore. Uh, USS Coronado is a, uh, a multi-mission platform that uh, focuses on one primary area based on a mission package that we have embarked. Right now, Coronado is four deployed with the surface warfare mission package, which includes 30 millimeter guns and 11 meter ribs uh, in support of anti-surface warfare, as well as uh, maritime interdiction. We have sailors that are embarked with the uh, uh, tailored and uh, quality training and visit board search and seizure, uh, as well as the ability to employ those 30 millimeter guns. Organically, the ship has a main battery. It's a Mark 110 Bofors 57 millimeter uh, gun. A gun is capable of, of shooting at a very high rate of, rate of fire, significantly greater than that of typical guns that the United States Navy has had on our cruisers and destroyers in the past. We're also outfitted with a, uh, a non-program of record uh, harpoon weapon system. It is a, a legacy system in our Navy, uh, but has been uh, modularized for use here on Coronado's maiden deployment to go ahead and, and test that concept for potential carry-on uh, outfit on future LCS platforms. So the littoral combat ship Coronado is capable of doing speed uh, 40 plus knots. They have four main propulsion engines, uh, includes two LM2500 General Electric gas turbines, something that our Navy has had for several decades. They also have uh, MTU German built uh, main propulsion diesel engines, uh, 20Vs. Uh, they're utilized predominantly for the ship's steaming. Uh, they're a more efficient uh, engine as far as achieving fuel economy. Uh, the gas turbines obviously provide us the ability to, to sprint at very high speeds relative to our typical cruiser destroyer counterparts. So what you're looking at here, not, not the best view relative to where the actual gun barrel is, but this is our, our main battery. It's a medium caliber gun, it's called a Mark 110 Bofors gun, 57 millimeter rounds that it'll fire, it's a unitary uh, projectile, and this gun will fire at a rate of 220 rounds per minute, a very uh, substantial speed for a, a gun of this size. Uh, it's uh, very accurate and uh, certainly complements the ship systems as far as how to engage uh, in the event that you, know, you have to, in, in an anti-surface role, if you have a uh, uh, boats that are swarming against the ship. It's got the ability to uh, adequately defend the ship at the medium caliber uh, with a medium caliber round. Uh, as we work our way back aft in the ship, we'll take the opportunity to look at the 30 millimeter guns, which is the next step down as far as range uh, and caliber. Um, it's part of the uh, surface warfare mission package. As you're probably aware, the littoral combat ship is a modular design. It has open architecture which essentially means that we can uh, go ahead and change the configuration of the ship's primary mission from as it exists now as a surface warfare platform to being a mine countermeasure vessel uh, or an anti-submarine warfare vessel based on that modularity and the ability to basically quickly roll on or roll off a mission package or crane on or crane off that same mission package depending on the equipment uh, that you're talking about relative to the, the, the package you're trying to, to bring on board. So Coronado is exclusively an SUW mission package for this deployment, the maiden deployment for the independence variant of LCS. Uh, we left San Diego back in June of 2016, led by Commander Scott Larson's crew, 204, uh, brought it out to RIMPAC, uh, exercised that SUW mission package and, and brought Coronado out here uh, with, with this same mission package intact. We are, as a Navy, continuing to bring the anti-submarine warfare mission package and the uh, uh, mine countermeasure package uh, to full operational capability. Um, but right now, the surface warfare mission package is fully deployable, as you, as you see, um, and certainly aligned to the mission that we're doing here in the uh, Asia-Pacific region. What you see here is a legacy harpoon uh, system. 
The only thing that differs from our harpoon system than you would otherwise see on a, a Ticonderoga class cruiser um, or a guided missile destroyer is basically where it's located. Um, the LCS platform was brought to life with a, a vision in mind for a, a, an organic surface-to-surface -surface missile system. Uh, that concept did not make its way to complete uh, fruition is from a programmatic perspective, but we as a surface Navy uh, are uh, competing, having a, you know, a competition to determine what will be deployed, and there may be certainly a delta between what eventually gets outfitted on LCS-2 variant relative to what gets outfitted on LCS-1 variant. Obviously not for, for me to, uh, to decide, but this is a, basically a, a rehearsal of concept as far as uh, being able to demonstrate the ship's modularity and have the ability to distribute lethality in keeping with uh, our, our strategic initiatives uh, for the surface Navy. Uh, and again, Harpoon, uh, legacy Harpoon, nothing special or new about it relative to its capabilities. Uh, here on Coronado, it, it's bringing, delivering a surface-to-surface -surface capability that we've had consistently in our Navy now for, for several decades. And were those, are those Harpoon integrated with your CIC? Uh, they are they are integrated in in a in a typical fashion. Typical. Fashion. Yes. We'll go ahead and try to make our way back into the shade here. Over here is the uh, central. Uh, station for controlling the ship um, from a, a maneuvering perspective. The littoral combat ship really starts to get unique at this place relative to a legacy ship and that's because on a, on a destroyer or a cruiser for example you could have up to 10 people on your bridge watch team starting with the signalman of the watch, the quartermaster of the watch, the bosun's mate of the watch and that's before you even get into the officers who are responsible for controlling the ship as far as driving it uh, and tactically maneuvering it. Um, what we have here in LCS is a minimal manning concept and it starts with uh, managing the resources on the ship's bridge. We'll have a, a console operator on each side of, of this uh, centerline console we call the junior officer of the deck. The officer of the deck in the opposite chair, that part is not uh, special or unique from the uh, traditional Navy or American Navy. Uh, the difference is, in addition to those duties, they b bring on the burden of all the other watch stations that you would typically parse out to, to 10 or 12 people. Um, what makes that somewhat manageable is that we have the ability to fully automate the ship's controls. Uh, we do steer the ship typically in autopilot, so if we intend to make a substantial course turn, we can quite literally dial um, that course uh, digitally um, in the ship's console telling it to turn right or to turn left and so long as we you know raise your eyes and validate that you're you're turning in a in a seaman like fashion uh, without any traffic uh, to endanger then the ship will essentially automatically turn to that ordered course rather than having to manipulate a helm uh, which would be typical for a, a cruiser or destroyer type uh, vessel um, the other thing that's fairly easy for, for our uh, deck officers to manipulate the ship is when um, we're doing more tactical maneuvering, specifically when we're pier side. Um, these combinators, as they're called, represent each of the ship's five propulsion assets. The forward uh, combinator is uh, used to control our, ba our, our azimuthal bow thruster. Um, that is relative to where you see the, the main battery here up forward, it's essentially just a tad bit forward of that and uh, below the ship. So it retracts, um, the forward portion of that thruster will retract from the ship and can be trained 360 degrees to maneuver the bow, port or starboard, as well as provide a vector both forward or aft in doing that. The other four combinators represent the each, each individual main propulsion drivetrain. What this particular variant of LCS has is a uh, legacy LM2500 General Electric gas turbine, something you would have seen on uh, Spruance class destroyers, Ticonderoga class cruisers, and certainly on the Arleigh Burke destroyers now for several decades. So as far as that propulsion drivetrain, what differs um, is not the main, the, uh, the prime mover, but actually how that drivetrain translates to uh, the running gear uh, out, out beyond the thrust bearing. 
So each one of those four main propulsion engines, and I'll get to the main propulsion diesels in a minute, they are essentially uh, coupled to a reduction gear and then to a propulsion shaft, and that shaft terminates with, a, with an impeller. And that impeller essentially draws water from underneath the ship and directs it out uh, or uh, some combination of, of, of a thrust vector immediately forward or some portion of it both forward and aft at slow speeds or directly aft when you're trying to back the ship up. Um, the way we steer the ship is in addition to controlling the impeller's throttles with the, uh, with the throttle handle here, each one of these combinators can be trained up to 30 degrees. And while the throttle controls the amount of thrust coming out of the impeller and being directed out of the water jet, these combinators can train the water jet up to 30 degrees so that thrust gets directed uh, 30 degrees off axis and thus the resulting vector of force to the ship is to go ahead and turn it. A very agile uh, capability, particularly for a ship that only draws 3,000 metric tons. Um, in that regard, we will typically operate the ship in a 4L steering mode, which essentially means that if you grab any one of these combinators and adjust the throttles or adjust the, the train of the, of the bucket, it'll tell the other three to match. So uh, you're basically driving the engines in tandem in that regard. When we get on and off the pier in a docking or undocking evolution, we have the ability to change that mode uh, in three different ways. We can put it in individual mode where we're telling each individual drivetrain to train the water jet bucket at a certain angle and then adjust and manipulate the throttles for each one with the idea that with the proper configuration and use of the ASI thruster, you can literally walk the ship as it sits right now on its pier heading to port or to starboard, depending on which side you're made up to the pier. What that all amounts to in, in, a, in layman's terms is that the ship can walk immediately laterally without twisting at all if you configure the uh, engines correctly, both port and starboard, or you can twist the ship 360 degrees, both port or starboard, without changing uh, where that pivot point is geographically located. So we could literally, if we didn't have a pier here uh, to compete with, we could put the bow 180 degrees point in the opposite direction and never get any closer to the, the vessels of forward or aft of us. And that's what, you know, what's very unique about the LCS platform is the ability to manipulate the, the, the main propulsion system with such precision relative to your traditional uh, dual shaft, dual prop kind of uh, cruiser destroyer type ship. What you see behind you uh, is some multi-function consoles. Um, I believe we're sanitized. Um, so we can certainly give you some access to that. Um, try to find a good spot to rip it open. So you have five multi-function consoles and they're called multi-function because you can do anything that you would do at one console you can do at another. So in a traditional Navy environment, we're going to have particular watch stations that'll sit at a given console. Um, some of those consoles on a destroyer or a cruiser can only do what that particular watch standard does based on the type of configuration. These are, can be manipulated in any which way you, you choose. So if you have a casualty where um, you, know, you have a circuit card or you have a loss of communications with the internal servers at one console, and you're in the middle of a gunnery event, then the watch trainer who controls the gun can immediately switch to another console uh, without really skipping a beat. Um, the, uh, the only other thing there is that um, everything we do um, from this space, uh, we have a complement in Integrated Command Center 2, which is uh, below us a, a couple decks and a little bit further backup. aft. With the backup or? I'm sorry? The second is a backup? It's not, it's not a backup, um, it's where we integrate the mission package. So the ability to control the 30 millimeter guns, which um, are very difficult to see unless you get far away from the ship, uh, very, very uh, obvious to you when you're a beam of the ship and then looking up. Um, but those guns are used in the uh, anti-surface uh, warfare mode. They'll be controlled from Integrated Command Center 2, as well as the unmanned aerial vehicle that you saw at the beginning of the tour. This is the captain's quarters. Oh, okay. So this is where my workstation is. We call this the in-port cabin. Um, one thing about the littoral combat ship is because it is a fast, agile ship, it requires uh, to be light and uh, 
compact. So this is a little bit more modest than you would typically see on a, on a U.S. Navy destroyer. But it certainly gets the job done as far as uh, providing me the accommodations to, to sleep and, and have access to uh, the networks on the ship. Um, obviously some, uh, some nice little photos of uh, our ship's namesake, the city of Coronado in, uh, in California, and uh, we're very proud of the ship. As you can see, the hangar is large enough to accommodate two MQ-8B Fire Scouts VTOL UAVs as well as one MH-60 Sierra helicopter. What we're looking at here is the, uh, the MQ-8 Bravo Fire Scouts, an unmanned aerial vehicle. Uh, USS Coronado has two of them embarked and they help support our, our, uh, our missions that uh, deal with aviation assets. Uh, it complements our uh, SH-60 Sierra Seahawk um, in that we have uh, pilots on board that is qualified to fly the, the, heli the man helicopter as well as pilot the unmanned vehicle uh, from an integrated control station within the skin of the ship. Uh, what the Fire Scout brings to the table is the ability uh, to have long endurance with a smaller airframe and deliver essentially the same kind of overhead uh, surveillance that the SH-60 Sierra can provide um, and is fully integrated into the, the combat suite for USS Coronado. Uh, 